And we welcome you to Cameron Indoor, everybody. Dave O'Brien alongside Corey Alexander on a Saturday night in the ACC. The Duke Blue Devils off to a nice start. They have taken an 8-2 to two lead. Vernon Carey coming off 27 against NC State. Trey Jones has emerged as perhaps the favorite for ACC Player of the Year. And the junior guard getting 16.6 assists per game. They're raining threes, Corey, right out of the gate. Well, Cassius Stanley, who was a much better shooter than his, than his numbers suggest, stepping in and shooting the basketball like, with confidence. And one of the things talking with Nate Dames early in the day, they just need for Cassius just to go be a basketball player. Oftentimes he starts to overthink the situation. But off to a great start here tonight. Naheem Aline, one of the more reliable three-point guys for the Hokies, quieting the crowd at least for the moment. Here's Goldwire, and that's going to be off target. Snatched away by Carey, and he stuffs it in. Vernon Carey Jr., the 6'10 freshman, with some authority. He has four. And I'm not sure we could have scripted a better start for the Blue Devils, especially after the lack of energy and effort that they came out with on Wednesday night in Raleigh. And we could tell early today there was a fire lit under them by their coach to make sure they perform harder. And he didn't feel as though they competed in that game. And that's probably most concerning to Coach K. But we have not seen any of that problem here tonight. And he said it flat out. He said we were not competitive against NC State. Another one from long distance. This one by Stanley. And they can't miss beyond that line. Trey Jones with two threes. Cassius Stanley with two threes. And coming into this game, of course, Virginia Tech is the three-point shooting team. They're fourth nationally with 9.8 threes made per game. But right now, it's been about the Blue Devils from beyond the arc. Uh, Trey Jones with a block, but then a foul there. 16-7 to seven, Duke. Duke having it their way here tonight. Vernon Carey on the offensive glass. And then the finish on the opposite side of Cassius Stanley. Not one, but two threes for Cassius earlier. 17 points per game. And the last meeting went Duke's way 77 to 63. That was back in December. Carey really wasn't on the floor all that much. Only 15 minutes. And one of the reasons why is because in the first half, Virginia Tech scored 26 points in the paint. They were able to spread the floor out. P.J. Horn had 15 points, and they were able to bring Vernon Carey away from the basket. Even though he was effective offensively, Coach K didn't feel as though they were as prepared at that time as they are today to be able to play with him on the floor and still be able to guard the perimeter of the Hokies. But it's been a great start for Carey offensively as well as the Blue Devils knocking down four or five threes early in this game. Trey Jones picked up the foul right before the break. So 16 to 9, Blue Devils. Jones will swing that one into the corner. Duke enjoying life in the top 10 rankings for the 40th consecutive poll. Shot clock to five. Hurt drive it in. He's got to get it in the air, and he banks in two. And that's uncharacteristic of Matthew Hurt. Putting the ball on the floor and not only getting to the rim and finishing, but the behind the back move and having to make an individual play. But Hurd is offensively talented, seeing a little bit of it there on the last possession. Tough drive, well defended and off target by Nolly. Freshman from Atlanta made an immediate impact in ACC play, but has cooled a little bit in recent weeks. Cassius Stanley. Jones will swing it. Goldwater took the bump. Got it up there and he hit the shot. Boy, he was able to deaden it up there on the iron, Corey, and he'll go to the line. And Jordan Goldwire has become a consistent starter for Coach K in this group and has started with his defense, but he has continued to get better and better each time out offensively. Struggled against NC State, but outside of that game, he has played very good basketball on the offensive end of the floor as of late. What an interesting season he's had. He started the year in the lineup against Kansas. That was a two-point win, and he came off the bench for the next nine. He was in and out of the lineup for a while, but Coach K has pretty much used him as a starter for the most part the last several weeks. And one of the things about this Blue Devil team, they're very versatile. They've had 12 different starting lineups this season, so there hasn't been just one consistent lineup, but Coach K normally starts a game based upon the best matchup to be able to defend the opposing team. Wilkins puts it to the deck. A lot of contact there. Whistle with nine on the shot clock. They'll get hurt for that personal. 
You know, at the end of the game the other night against NC State, and the Wolfpack played an amazing game in knocking off Duke, there was some, I thought, fabricated controversy over whether Coach K actually shook the hand of the NC State head coach at the end. I saw it happen. I actually covered the game. Later, there were articles written, and there were you know, blow-ups like it was the Zapruder film and all this other stuff. I can tell you this. The crowd was about to rush the court. Everybody knew that. They warned Coach K, and they also warned the Duke kids, you got to get off the floor. But there was a handshake. There was a handshake, and the only reason that it was a controversy is because Kevin Keats, the NC State head coach, reached back to make sure he let Coach K know right. to get his team off the floor. Coach K acknowledged it, but he was trying to do what Coach Keats asked him to do. Get his team off the floor, get to the locker room, because he knew there was going to be a, a, a crowd coming onto the floor. But one of the things that we've learned, you know, when you are the top basketball program in the country year after year, the only global college yeah. basketball right. program, things get blown out of proportion. Oh, they sure do. And Duke has to live with that sometimes. I thought that was absolutely silly. You know how many times Coach Keats was asked about it after the game? Zero. <laughs> Nobody even asked him about it. And the craziest part about it, if they had, he would have put it to rest yes. right away. On the drive, hurts. Some contact. He hits the deck. He'll go to the line looking for a three-point play. He was not to be denied. Fouled by Couture and looking for a three-point play. And the second time we've seen Matthew put the hurt on Virginia Tech's defense, getting inside the paint, off the bounce, able to finish through the contact and opportunity for the and one. Boy, Duke red hot, shooting nine for 12 in these opening minutes from the field. Hurt pretty good foul shooter. He makes 75%. He was very big clutch down the stretch in that win over eighth ranked FSU with a big rebound. He was fouled with 13 seconds to go and Duke up by three. He came through in a big way in that one. He has five points. I thought that was one of the most important wins of the year. That was right on the heels of a, a draining win in a great basketball game against North Carolina. They could have very easily slipped against FSU. That's going to be an offensive foul on Couture. I agree with you and the reason I agree may be different but from the standpoint that I honestly believe that Florida State could very well be the best team in the ACC as you see Couture coming in, dipping the shoulder into Trey Jones. But Florida State may be the best team in the league. And when you consider what they were able to do at Louisville and then coming into this building, and as you mentioned, right off of a very emotional win at North Carolina, for Duke to be able to get that win was very important because not only did it keep them at the top of the ACC with Louisville and Florida State, but also it's set up for, you know, giving them an opportunity because those two teams have to play against each other. Right. You know, so Duke is going to be ahead of one of those teams moving into the future. And I believe Duke still has a matchup. But well, I'm sorry, they don't have another matchup with Louisville, but they need Florida State to win that game if Duke wants to have a chance to win the ACC regular season championship. Jones knocking down the first one. FSU winning today. Nice win on the road against NC State. They were unable to keep what they were doing the other night against Duke rolling against FSU. The game was in the 60s, and then Louisville also rounding back into form, aren't they? Another win for them today. After the two game, two back-to-back -back losses at Georgia Tech and at Clemson, now we're starting to see that Louisville team coming back. And honestly, I think it may be an even better Louisville team because now they've handled some adversity and found a way to get through it. Radford got it up there, rolls off the iron. Tipped right to Hurt. Here come the Blue Devils. Looking for the quick strike carry, but off his hands. That would have been spectacular. It really would have been, especially when you consider where the ball was thrown from. But Trey Jones continues to disrupt teams defensively. Wilkins launching. Got it. He hits a three. And that's the key for the Hokies. They have to be able to knock down threes. We talked about it earlier. They average 9.8 three-point field goals made per game. Fourth nationally behind Marquette and Villanova coming into the game. And Alabama's number one. But they have to be able to smaller team, so they've got to be able to make threes to neutralize the size of the Blue Devils. Under 12 to go here in the first half. And the Hokies trying to cut in. Beattie doesn't shoot that often. That's off the front of the iron. Only makes 22% beyond the three. 
on a team that really does live and die beyond that arc. Carey will try one. Got it! He rattles in a triple. Vernon Carey is more than capable of shooting the three ball. You've got to get out on that. And right now, the Blue Devils have doubled up the Hokies. 28-14. Innings after all of the play today. We mentioned that Louisville and Florida State have already won. Louisville's played one more game. They have not had their bye. How about Syracuse today? And Syracuse, of course, we saw the numbers on that game early. And Syracuse was down a significant number to Georgia Tech. But the Orange coming back and getting a win. Mark Dolezal and Elijah Hughes both with 20-point games. And Virginia creeping along, Obi. 11-5 and five yes. right now. You're always keeping your eye on the Hoos. They're knocked away into the run out. And the foul on Moore. Moore gets hit. 6'6 freshman. 28-14 Blue Devils. And this is the Blue Devil defense that we've grown accustomed to watching all season long. Matthew Hurt coming in, the help side coming up with the block shot. And then Vernon Carey with a nice outlet pass to get Wendell Moore out in transition. But this Blue Devil team defensively is their calling card. Now, they're, you know, top five nationally in scoring, scoring close to 83 points per game. But their bread is buttered on the defensive end of the floor. They pretty much take you out of everything that you want to do offensively because they deny and they get out in the passing lanes. And they're led by, you know, a young man who could be ACC Defensive Player of the Year as well as Player of the Year and Trey Jones. And the way that he's playing this season, been spectacular. Would he get your vote right now? He would definitely get my vote for ACC Player of the Year. Right. I've really got to do more research on the Defensive Player of the Year side, but I know that he's going to be right there in the mix. I know there are a number of guys that can get involved in that conversation. But right now, he is my vote for ACC Player of the Year because of what he does on both ends of the floor. Good start for Isaiah Wilkins, a sophomore from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Seven points for the Hokies, but pounding it inside for Carey. You know, the other night, even though they had that 22-point loss, he showed up. 27 points, 12 rebounds. He did show up, and what didn't show up for the Blue Devils is their defensive effort. That's the thing that Coach K was most concerned about. When he started talking about effort and them competing, they didn't do it defensively, and that, that was what they were lacking on Wednesday night. But there's been no lack of it here. That is a dime. They swing it out for Hurt, moving it back to Moore. 32-16 Duke. Jones back out for Moore. Off the back of the iron, but they'll get a second shot at it. Hurt kind of stumbling into the lane has it stripped. And taken away by Wilkins. That's their second turnover. Bradford slamming on the brakes. Here's Cone. Cone, another freshman. And a whistle, a foul. 9.28 to go in the half. Coach K, post-game press conference after the NC State game. Our kids have won 22 games and 12 conference games. And, and uh, you, you have to stay hungry while you're winning at that level because we're not a team at that level. We've just won that many games. And... Uh, uh, and tonight we were not competitive. You know, he told that to Seth Greenberg and I before the game. We had the Duke NC State game as Radford fires up a 16 footer. And he said, you know, right now, Duke, he said, we're good. We're not great. He said, I love my kids. I love my team. But we're not at that elite level yet. That was before the game. Almost as if he sensed there might be a lull. And it certainly was because they were out of sorts all night. Well, he's made it very clear that this season there's a much smaller margin for error than he's had, you know, in the in the last couple of years past when you consider the fact that last year he had Zion Williamson, who was ACC player and national player of the year, as well as R.J. Barrett. You've got two 20-point-per-game scores. But their role players are Trey Jones, Cam Reddish. I mean, that is a team that is loaded. So then when you consider what they have this year, well, Trey Jones and Vernon Carey are the stars, but you have to have other guys stepping up 
as Cassius Stanley, Wendell Moore Jr., Matthew Hurt, somebody else has to step up, and they had none of that on Wednesday night. Part of the reason why they suffered, you know, what has been Coach K's biggest loss to an unranked opponent in his tenure here at Duke, uh, with Duke. Mike also made, I think, a valuable point for all of us who cover college athletics, and that is they're 19, 20 years old. Sometimes you don't know what you're going to get, and they're going to have a bad night. And it's not just Duke. Mike Young is finding out the same thing <laughs> right. with the Hokies. And so, you know, we've talked about them and the three opportunities to win a triple overtime game on their home court, but yet unable to do it. And they lost to a much more veteran Miami Hurricane. Connell well, goes for the slam. He flushes it down. He got airborne in a hurry. Biggest play of the night so far, 34-16 Duke. Alex O'Connell, the junior out of Roswell, Georgia, lights him up. Nolly stripped from behind. They may give that block to Delorier. He got up there. O'Connell on the wing. Stanley, yes! He knocks down the three. And Cassius Stanley shooting the basketball extremely well. We saw him here about an hour and a half before game time getting up shots. And it has paid off for Cassius as he got off to a great start shooting the three here tonight. Stanley looking inside. Delaye into the center of that lane and blocked. Gets that back and batted away by Nolly, but that's on the line. It's a 10-0 run here for Duke. Coming up, a Durham time machine. A look back at Duke over the years. If that's what's coming up. Alex O'Connell's going way up above the rim for the finish as the blue of the year. I will agree, and that's one of the reasons why I feel like Trey Jones is the ACC Player of the Year front runner right now is because every ACC Player of the Year that I can remember has that signature moment. And that would have been the signature moment for Trey Jones. 28 points in that game. But most importantly, the free throw miss yes. leading to the game-tying <laughs> right. jump shot. That ridiculous shot. I mean, just <laughs> unreal. And again, you know, I've seen that attempted before, but really, when does that ever work? Right. I mean, you guys have thought of it, but... You know, to be able to execute that the way that they were able to at the end of that game to put themselves in position to win, spectacular. Rematch coming up on March 7 on ESPN. Foul will go against Nolly. that will be number one. He's having a rough start here, 0 for 5. He has not scored again. He came in leading Virginia Tech at 17.6 rebounds a game. But Landers Nolly has shot over his last nine games He's shooting 33% from the field. He has struggled during the second half of the seeds and especially in ACC play. And you go back to the game against Miami, four for 21 from the field, one for eight from three, but he did make nine of his 10 free throws. So everything from the floor has been a struggle for Landers Nolly and right now unable to get to the free throw line. Said some great games, some outstanding performances. He opened up the year with 30 and a victory over Clemson. Look at the freshman scoring leaders. Vernon Carey, number two, behind Anthony Edwards nationally, and up by much. And then Landers Nolly at 17 points a game. But he's gone cold in recent outings. And Cole Anthony, who's only played 16 games, as Cassius Stanley trying to put himself in that mix. The top scoring freshman here. Four three pointers already for Cassius to get this game started. And if the Blue Devils are going to shoot the basketball this way, and that's simply the look that Mike Young just gave, the Blue Devils shoot the basketball like this, no one's beating them. And Cassius has 14 here in the first half. Well, this is the kind of start that Coach K was looking for against NC State. He didn't get it there. In fact, it was the other way. But they have flipped it here tonight. But one, one major component. These guys are comfortable here. And you think about this is a home game. You know, Cassius Stanley 
As Trey Jones almost comes up with another steal. Almost did what you did when you were playing for Virginia, going slamming into that thing. Well, the difference is <laughs> he was able to tightrope, even though he steps on the sideline, he's able to tightrope it. But you see that CA to start Cameron, my initials? There may be a dent there somewhere from when I ran into it my freshman year. My teammate Jason Weatherford, who's now the associate head coach at University of Virginia, ran off the bench. He thought I was done forever. <laughs> they thought I hit my head. I actually put my elbow up to shield me, but somehow or another the CA attracted me. I can see why. But there's no giving that thing. No I mean, give it fights whatsoever. back, right? And for the record, it's the exact same table 25 years later. Uh, oh, frustration file here by Virginia Tech. I, I was wrong with my math. 29 years later. 29. <laughs> now you're really dating, literally dating yourself. That foul on Aline is his second after the shot was blocked. And it'll be time to shoot a one and one with about five minutes to go here in the first half. And Mike Krzyzewski delighted with the effort he's getting from his starters and his bench. Vernon Carey, 64%. He has shot more foul shots than any player, any freshman player in the country this season. And rightfully so. Duke likes to play through him. They want to play inside out, give Carey every opportunity to score. But he is seeing different defenses on a nightly basis, double teams, triple teams, whatever it may be. Teams are trying to find a way to take Vernon Carey out of the mix. Yet, very few have been successful in doing so. Stanley went for the lunging steal. Didn't come up with that. Just barely missed it. Ojiako in close. No. Duke protecting the interior so well. Stepping in. Stanley a three. And he airmailed that one. Got to shoot it though. When you're shooting the ba basketball as well as he has in this game, you got to shoot that one. Now the next step for Cash is Stanley. That shot can't bother him. He's got to shoot the next one because again if you allow that one miss to bother you when you've made four straight Don't allow that confidence to get messed up by missing one shot Goldwire high up for the rebound to lead the charge for Duke Virginia Tech six for 23 from three-point land He's Gonna roll out of play and Back the other way, Duke will have possession with four minutes to go in the half. And it's just been that type of night thus far for Virginia Tech. Tyrese Rafford pushing the break, and Isaiah Wilkins running the wing, but that's a play where normally you would expect for Wilkins to run to the three-point line. That's what Virginia Tech does, but he's going to the basket. The pass is off target, a turnover, and a missed opportunity for the Hokies. Gary zips the pass. Jones fires, but short. Radford, a little too much dribbling, spun into the lane and lost it. Stanley, great defense by Beatty, the point guard, and a terrific save while sailing out of bounds. And right now, you got to find Jalen Cohn. That's the guy. Cohn swishes it in, so he saved it on the baseline, got to the other end, and he drops in a three-pointer. But I love what he did. He put his hand up to allow his teammate to know he was going to be open well before it actually happened. And Cone coming off a career high 20 points in that loss to Miami. Knocks down to three, and Virginia Tech is going to need many more of those. And they're going to have to do something about Duke in the paint right now as Jordan Goldwire comes up with the offensive board and is able to put it back for two more second chance points. Kevin Connors on the other side, but Vernon Carey Jr. against Virginia Tech. Off to the races here tonight, already with 11 points in 14 minutes. All right, Kevin King, thank you very much. Bracketology with Joe Lenardi, number one seeds, Kansas, Baylor, the Zags, San Diego State. Duke a number two seed right now. That's how Joe Lenardi sees things. And Kansas with a great win today. And I'm looking for Louisville. Where is Louisville on that two seed line? And I know Maryland has been great as it has had Dayton this season. But last year, the ACC had three number one seeds in the NCAA tournament. Wondering if they can get three number two seeds in this year.
Tyrese Radford, the freshman from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I think this kid's going to be a star in this league. I believe so. Go known as Boots to the Hokie faithful only because he's from the state that looks like a boot, which not the most original name for, you know. I like wait, it, wait, You like it? I like it. Okay. I got. It. I, I think like, it's going to stick. I tell you, I like Tyrese Rafford as a player. No question about that. And you think about a young man who averages close to seven rebounds per game at six foot one and has had multiple double-digit rebounds games this year, had a double-double, 26 points, 12 rebounds versus and, Miami. And you saw his shot the other night, which shouldn't have counted, by the way, but it went. You know, I was I was looking at that, and I was wondering why that counted, because I can remember Larry Bird doing it back in the day, and it didn't count. They waved it off. So, you know, because from my understanding, when the ball goes over the backboard, one direction or another, it's supposed to be a dead ball. Right. I like it. I do it all the time. <laughs> It, by the way, they credited him with the basket. Yeah, no, no, it was good. Heck of a shot. Well, he, he scored 26 in the game. He's hit a couple of big shots this season for the Hokies, too. He gets one up right now and sinks it. I need to, a few of my guys, Roger Ayers, Mike Eads, Ted Valentine. I need somebody to text me and let me know if that was actually legit. I don't believe it's supposed to count over the backboard like that. Anything over the backboard from out of bounds which comes into play. That's allowed, according to my rule book. 131 to go here. And 46 to 25, it's been all Duke here in the first half. It really has. And, you know, we heard Team McClure, John Christman, talking about the response and the way that good teams respond. And this, you know, is adversity for Duke. This is the first time they've had to handle something of the such. And, again, they had losses at Clemson. You know, and they they lost at home to Louisville. So they've had some adversity to respond to before, but going into that environment and having to play on the road the way that they had to play at NC State, and let's not take anything away from NC State because Markel Johnson was spectacular in that game, as was Devin Daniels, as was Derek Funderburg. Matthew Hurts. But Duke did not have the same level of fight in them that you expect to see from a Blue Devils team but they have responded here tonight. Horn with the left hand, no. Beattie will kick it back out. The freshman will misfire there, carry with the rebound. And not getting back defensively. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now I'm disappointed. And Stanley with the lay-in. Yeah, that's the problem. Cassius doesn't lay, doesn't lay it in. <laughs> yeah. He dunks everything. Now I'm disappointed. We have to have a conference call later. <laughs> Jerome, I know you're listening. Get Cassius on the phone tonight. We got to talk about that. <laughs> Radford will spin and fire, and that doesn't touch anything. And Duke's right. defense has been terrific here in the first half. Well, it's been, Duke's defense has been terrific, but transition defense for Virginia Tech has it. Mm. We've seen Duke get, getting many opportunities. We watched Matthew Hurt dribble 94 feet, get to the rim, shoot a layup. Cassius Stanley gets behind the defense, gets an easy layup. And again, when things aren't going your way, the small things are what are going to carry you. And right now, the Hokies not doing the small things that can help them get back into this game. Well, an impressive bounce back performance here for the number six team in the country, but that'll be a travel on Hurt. So they turn it over. O'Connell coming back on the floor now in the final seconds, 8.9 to go before the break. They've turned it over four times. 51 to 25. You think the Blue Devils got a little bit angry about what happened in Raleigh? Well, I'm not sure about the Blue Devils team, but the Blue Devils coach sure did. Oh, yeah. We could talk, tell that talking to him earlier today. He was not happy about what happened with his team. Uh, his intensity is remarkable. With all the games he's won, it still burns as bright as ever. And that's one of the reasons why you know he's not done anytime soon. No. No, <laughs> when, sir. <laughs> when you get a chance to talk to him, and, you know, I have people always asking me, how long do you think Coach K will do it, on, on, on. He is nowhere close to being done with what he's doing on the sidelines right now. This record, this wins record is going to be so far out of place, <laughs> I'm not sure anybody ever gets close to that again. I could see him coaching four or five years easily. I'm not even sure he thinks about it. You know, when people bring it up, it's one thing. As far as that record is concerned, he just keeps adding on to that. Because as we came on the air tonight, we were discussing a you know, meeting with Coach K earlier today. And tonight was the most important game of his life. That's how he came off. It, it really was. And, I mean, he was passionate about that. And he's right now, and think about this, up 26 at the end of the first half, he's actually going out 
in trying to take as much time as he can off the clock and not just enough time to not give Virginia Tech a good look. Yep, and they didn't get one. Cassius Stanley lighting it up. Maybe not the dunk you were looking for at the end, but I mean, 16 points for him already. And it's all Duke here at the break at Cameron Indoor, 51 to 25, as we go to the studio for the E-Trade halftime report with Kevin John and King. 1,154 wins throughout his career, over 45 seasons, but yet never misses the opportunity for a teaching moment. Talking with Alex O'Connell afterwards about something going into the locker room, constantly coaching, and we've talked about it a number of times in this game. Each and every game is the most important one. And loves the way this one has gone so far against a very young Hokies team. Who we'll start with the basketball here in the second 20 minutes. Tyrese Radford, one of the bright spots, one of the few in the first half, but can't get that one to go from short range. And Tyrese Radford really has been the bright spot for Virginia Tech over the past six games. Virginia Tech losing six out of their last seven and struggling here at Cameron Indoor. One of the things, Dave, we've never talked about, there's only one member of the Virginia Tech Hokies teams that has played on this court. Mm -hmm. Now, Wabi Sabidi and P.J. Horn both were here two years ago as freshmen, but P.J. Horn was the only one that actually participated in that game. So when you're from, you know, the state of North Carolina, as is Jalen Cohn, as is Isaiah Wilkins, these guys, of course, you grow up either wanting to play for Duke or at least play against Duke. But nationally, that's the case. So when this is your first time here, oftentimes it can be a bit overwhelming. Now, Mike Young has done such a, a fine job in his first year. He was terrific at Wofford. Took him to five NCAA tournaments. Grew up just 20 miles from Blacksburg. Very first college basketball game he ever saw was at Virginia Tech. But when you consider where Virginia Tech was after Buzz Williams departed to go to Texas A&M, in March mm -hmm. and Mike Young taking over this team with what he has returning you've got with Beatty returning you've got PJ Horn returning and you've got two redshirt freshmen in Tyrese Rafford and Landers Nolly sitting out as Nolly's able to knock down the three his first points if you thought about where Virginia Tech would be February 22nd of 2020 no one would have guessed that they would be six and nine in ACC play and with wins over Michigan State and having the big wins they've had this season. So Trey but, Jones is shredding everybody. But regardless as to how this game works out, it has been a A plus effort thus far for Mike Young and his staff to get this team to where they are right now. Well, I would have to agree with that, although coming off a triple overtime loss at Miami, so that one really stung. Nolly slamming on the brakes. He's fouled. 18-20 to go here in the second half. Harold Cohn, Jalen's dad. And then you mentioned they're from Walkertown, North Carolina. So I mean to come up, play, you know, bitty basketball and you know, play through high school, have all the success he had, get recruited nationally, elected to go to Virginia Tech, but you know, raised here in North Carolina. And I think Jalen said it this week. I mean, you either want to play a Duke or you want to Try to beat two. Yeah, you do. And Jalen actually reclassed up a year. He could be a high school senior right now. So he reclassed up to go play for Virginia Tech. But picked the perfect spot for him because of the way Mike Young coaches and utilizes the three-point line. And Jalen Cohn is a knockdown shooter. You're talking about a young man who is shooting over 50% from three, 52.6 to be exact, on the season. We're not talking about an ACC play. We're not talking about over the last. On the season, he's shooting close to 53% from three. Great foul shooter, too. He's the best on the team, 90%. Carey trying to back in, draws a lot of contact there as they try and buckle down on Vernon Carey, who was closing in on a double-double in the first half. And we talked about how Vernon Carey has seen so many different defensive coverages. On that possession, there are three Hokies surrounding him when he catches the basketball in the paint. Carey wants it again, working hard. That won't drop. Rebounded away by Radford. Nolly trying to get into the offensive flow, but he's finding that very difficult terrain. Again, he came in averaging 17. More from the corner. Can't bury the three. Hokies trying to push the tempo. Radford again. Boy, that looked a lot like the shot that he hit. Right in front of the buzzer in the overtime game against North Carolina. It really did. And Tyrese Rafford, it continues to impress 
and growing into his role. And right now, he's been their, their guy over the last six games, normally leading them in scoring, but also in rebounding and continue to give that consistent effort to coach young. And when you're coaching young guys, the one thing that you want to be able to know is what are you going to do for me each and every night? Tyrese Rafford has given Mike Young that. He's that one constant that they know that they're going to get alongside with Bisa Beatty. At 26 points against Miami. 10 out of 11 shooting. And by the way, played 50 minutes in a triple overtime game. The most minutes from by a Hokie since Malcolm Delaney in the double overtime game. And I can remember that, that Malcolm Delaney game. I actually called that game, believe it or not. The main water line broke on campus. Oh, good. Yeah. In, in Blacksburg. <laughs> yeah. So the game was delayed four hours. And then you've got Gravis Vasquez from Maryland yep. and Malcolm Delaney going at it. Vasquez went over 40 points. I think Delaney had 38. It was a great basketball game. And the craziest part about it is no one could use the restroom the entire time. <laughs> right. So you're stuck there. But you saw a great game. <laughs> Carey not to be denied. He'll draw the foul. He'll be at the line to shoot two. He's 6'10 freshman from Miami. Whose dad, of course, played for the Miami Dolphins. As an offensive lineman. And at the line to shoot a pair here. And tomorrow at 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 Pacific and ESPN, we have the debut of D. Wade, Life Unexpected, the ESPN Films, deeply personal documentary chronicling his experiences on and off the court. From his childhood days in Chicago to Marquette and Miami, everything in between. D. Wade, life unexpected tomorrow at 9 Eastern on ESPN. And looking forward to watching that. Dwayne Wade, of course, one of the better basketball players that we've seen. But more importantly, what he's been able to do in recovering from adversity as a young person is a great example to many who out, out there who will be watching. And I look forward to seeing that as well. 16.40 to go. The Blue Devils rolling since the opening tip. They buried a bevy of threes right out of the gate. And they were up by 26 at halftime. Loose ball right underneath the basket with six on the shot clock. And a possession arrow will go the other way. Duke trying to pick up their 23rd win of the season. Trying to keep pace with both FSU and Louisville in the ACC who both won today. And right now a carousel at the top when you consider that Duke was able to beat Florida State here on this court. Florida State actually went to Louisville and beat the Cards, but the Cards were able to come here and beat the Blue Devils here at Cameron Indoor. So those three teams have all mixed it up all season long. And we have Monday night somewhat of a tiebreaker mm -hmm. because Florida State and Louisville will get together once again at the Donald L. Tucker Center in Tallahassee, Florida. Louisville's played one more game than the other two. And another foul once again. Carey who lives at that line he is heading back there when we come back. 56-31 Duke here at Cameron Indoor. Side Trey Jones on that Wendy's Wooden Award watch and Carey continues to get better and better as the season goes along. And one of the things I'd like to talk about with Vernon Carey, he was a guy in high school and I spent a lot of time around Vernon on the Nike EYBL circuit. He floated on the perimeter. We've seen his ability to shoot the basketball, mm -hmm. and that will help him moving forward into the NBA. But what he's done since he's come to Duke is he has established himself as a true low post presence. Also, he has gotten his body into great physical conditioning, averaging 25 minutes per game, but playing much more so now than he was early in the year and affecting the game both ends of the floor. We talked with Coach K about him today and talked about how in the first game between these two, Virginia Tech was actually able to make Coach K take Vernon Carey off the floor. Yeah, he only played 15 minutes. Yeah, because of the way he was struggling defensively. But you see that has not been a problem at all in this game. He continues to make these beautiful passes out of double teams. Stanley fighting for the rebound, and he's going to win it. It's off Virginia Tech and out of bounds. But I love the fact that he really came in and bought into what Coach K was asking him to do. And being a, a, a team guy, because again, Vernon Carey could have come here and said, yeah, I'll be a post player, but I want to showcase what I do best. And when I tell you he can really shoot the ball, he can really shoot the ball and he can put it on the floor. And that's what he'll do primarily in the NBA because the game has gone away from being able to post up. But 
for Duke to be successful, he is playing exactly the way that he needs to uh, being a beast on the interior. Well, he's one more rebound away from another double-double. That'll be his 14th of the season should he get it. A foul here against Duke with exactly 15 minutes to go at Cameron Indoor. Sold out for the 470th consecutive time. Stanley will pick up the personal. Duke's tournament resume now. By the way, San Diego State is trailing as we speak in their game tonight. Well, I've ruled for Brian Dutcher and the Aztecs, so I, I don't want to see them go down, but I don't believe that it will affect San Diego State from that one line as we see the Blue Devils as a two seed right now. And I don't know if Duke can get up to the one line, but when you consider that someone is going to win the ACC tournament, whether it's Duke, Florida State, Louisville, or the field, and if it's one of those three teams, will we possibly have to look at an ACC team once again being a number one seed, especially when you consider the gauntlet that you have to go through in this league? And Trey Jones continues to attack the paint, finding Cassius Stanley, who doesn't settle for the three this time, puts the pressure on the defense and finds his way to the free throw line. Ojiaco with the foul to put him at the line. Duke is 12 for 16 at the free throw line. That's one of the odd things about the loss on Wednesday. Typically a very good foul shooting team. They, they almost always are under Mike Krzyzewski, but they struggled at the line. They were two for seven in the first half. So one of the things, and of course, I watched you and Seth Greenberg call that game and listened, and one of the things I saw just from when the bench shots showing Coach K on the bench, mm -hmm. you could tell he knew it wasn't their night. Right. You know, it, when Markel Johnson throws in another half-court shot, his third on the season, <laughs> yeah. it's one of those things where you go into halftime and you say, hey, guys, look, we're going to do everything we can to fight to get back into this game. But to his coaches, he was probably saying, guys, tonight might not be the night for us. Simply be, And when you watched him coach the second half, he allowed him to play through times in the you know second half where you think he maybe would have called a timeout. Right. And it wasn't that he gave up. It was simply, I think, he was allowing his team to try to figure things out on their own and deal with that adversity on the fly. Well, sometimes those lessons you learn in February really pay off in March and April. And a slam by O'Connell after the theft. He's had the two biggest dunks of the game. He has, but that's Duke basketball. Getting out into the passing lanes, turning the opponents over, getting fast break points. One of the reasons why they're fourth nationally in scoring, averaging 82.4 points per game. And this is a Blue Devils team that continues to try to find its way. And the coach can't be the first to tell you, they're not a great team yet, but they're working on getting to that point. Hunter Couture will bury the three-pointer. Freshman out of Orlando. Originally committed to play for Coach Young at Wofford, but he signed with the Hokies when Young took the job in Blacksburg. Stanley, time to line up a three. Yes. He's had a big night. He's got 21. And Cassius Stanley shoots the basketball this way. He continues to become more and more dangerous as a player. And I can tell you right now, if he shoots the basketball, it doesn't have to be this well. But half of this for the remainder of the season, we won't see him in a Duke uniform next year. <laughs> Did some big games at 22 in the overtime victory against Carolina. That wild one. Beatty from the corner. Yeah, gets it to go. Again, not his forte. Well, Bisa Beatty, the junior from North Andover, Massachusetts. Great Love, Red Sox country, yeah. by the way. <laughs> you were going to sneak that in there. Stuck it in there. <laughs> Love Beatty. Love the fact that he competes both ends of the floor defensively. And he and Trey Jones have had some great matchups when you consider the previous game as well as the NCAA tournament game last season where Virginia Tech had an opportunity to beat the Blue Devils. Ahmed Hill, and I know Ahmed is listening because he follows his Hokies, missing a chippy at the end of that game to be able to win it for the Hokies. Wilkins with the foul. 12.50 to go here in the second half. Duke has been roaring since the opening tip. Goldwire coming back on to replace Trey Jones. Not among those who believe that Trey Jones is the man to beat right now for ACC Player of the Year is Mike Young, the head coach for Virginia Tech. Yeah, you asked us the question earlier today, who will we vote for? Mike Young and I at the exact same time said Trey Jones. <laughs> and so when you look at it, I, I thought maybe that I would be there out on an island by myself, but... 
coaches appreciate what Trey Jones does. And Vernon Carey, of course, if, if Vernon Carey wins it or Jordan War wins it, no one will complain. But when you look at having impact on winning, I believe that Trey Jones has a bigger impact on winning than anyone in the And ACC over right and now. above the great North Carolina victory in which, what, he outscored them all by himself 18 to 15 down the stretch. A one-man show there in many ways. But his, like, last 10 or 12 games, I think he scored more points than anybody in the conference. He's tied with Vernon Carey. Both have scored yep. 210 points over the last 12 games. Those two tied for the mark over that stretch and of course also a stretch where Duke has only lost the one game right Beatty with the foul 12 25 to go so he's I think getting a bit of a steamroll of support here over the last month when maybe it was assumed it was going to be one of the other guys who are all very deserving by the way but the way Trey Jones has played offensively and defensively maybe has set him a little apart. I agree, and I think he will also be involved in that defensive player of the year conversation this season. So when you look at that, and again, it's, it's about winning. And when you affect winning the way that Trey Jones does, and not only from a on-court, but also a leadership standpoint, that's what I think would maybe carry him over the top. When you look at his numbers, close to 16 points per game, the 6.5 assists per game, and his 2.3 assist to turnover rate is down from where he was setting a freshman record a year ago, but that's because he's scoring so much more. And he's not throwing as many lobs as I am. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Foul on the shove with 11.54. To go in this contest, the foul on Wilkins. Duke on top, 67-39 over the Hokies. Season high is 24, so closing in on that with almost 12 minutes to go. Duke, by the way, already in the ACC has beaten an opponent five times by 30 points or more. That's a school record. They're on their way to doing it again. And that's one of those records that you never even think of until <laughs> it's happening right in front of you. But that really shows you that's a testament to their defense. Because, again, Duke has always been a scoring team. But when you think about the way that they are limiting teams this year, I mean, they're giving up an ACC play 27% three-pointers to their opponents. Now, NC State was able to beat them, knocking down eight of their 13 three-point tries. But right now, Virginia Tech, 6 for 15, 33% is above their average, but yet not where Virginia Tech is used to shooting. And the Blue Devils have done a great job not only limiting their percentage, but also limiting the attempts from the Hokies. And they've also won the war in the paint all night long. And, and that actually was a battle that Duke lost right? in the first game between the two. Virginia Tech actually scored 40 points in the paint in that game. That scored them 36 to 19. In the paint tonight. Nice turnaround there. Well, Hurt got the shot he wanted. Wouldn't drop for him. Cone on the drive. That shuts down quickly on him. Here's Horn off the front of the iron. It's a small thing, but if you look at on that last possession, how many different guys help? Javandori gets over to take away Jalen Cohn's opportunity at the rim. But even on the kickout, Wendell Moore Jr. is flying out to contest the P.J. Horn three-pointer. And when you're up 30, that's hard to be have, have this level of discipline on the defensive end of the floor. But these Blue Devils continue to keep their foot on the gas pedal. Well, they have made life very difficult tonight on the young Hokies. Nice driving move there by Wilkins. Isaiah Wilkins... The sophomore from Winston-Salem has nine. So he's a, more than doubled his average tonight. With about ten minutes to go at Cameron Indoor. Moore lost his footing and gave away the basketball. On a turnover. Here's Cone to line up a long one. Can't drill it. That's okay. When you shoot for 53%, that's a better shot than a layup. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He's 53%. Coming off a nice 20-point game and a triple overtime loss to Miami for Virginia Tech. O'Connell will give it away. Here's the three-pointer on the way, but that won't fall, and that's let them down tonight. Big changes coming up here for Duke. They've got five subs ready to check in 
for Mike Krzyzewski. And we'll take the timeout. Duke in command. They have been all night. 69 to 41 of the Hokies. The former Cassius Clay there. His last hurrah that defeats signaling the end of the great Ali and his boxing career. My favorite athlete of all time. And got to get you over to the Muhammad Ali Museum in yes. Louisville, Kentucky. It's I got uh, a trip coming up. I'm going to go. It is a special place for those who are fans and of course, boxing on tab tonight. Oh. Wilder, Fury. Like most of our rematch. crew is, is like one foot out the door getting ready to go to the fight. I understand. Not our producer, not our director, nobody. Oh, wait a minute. The director minute. is the director's definitely already gone. He yeah. might already be gone now. <laughs> <laughs> the big, big night. No question about it. Duke on top, 69-41. Bradford gives himself a good look from 18 and he buries that there's a lot of savvy in his game. I love him. I think he is going to be a stud in Blacksburg for a long time and he fits into what Mike Young wants because not everyone can be the three point shooter. You've got to have someone that's out there willing to defend and create plays for others rebound. And I think Tyrese Rafford is the perfect fit to go off alongside all the shooters because he does all the dirty work, but yet he makes it look pretty. Kind of like Muhammad Ali. Yes, the dirty work, but very, very pretty well. You know, in his case, when he won that game against North Carolina, you know, with 0.4 seconds to go in overtime at the driving play, we talked to him, you and I had the game, we talked to him afterwards, and he was the least surprised guy in the building that he got assigned to hit that shot, hit that game winning shot. But he's also a very opportunistic player. He does it. You don't have to run plays for Tyrese Rapp because one part of his game is he's such a great rebounder. Because you see another one, and then he can push the basketball and make plays for other players. Couture with a nifty dunk. I like that from Couture. Didn't know he had that in his game. Thought he was just a shooter. Quick strike on the other end. Jack White will lay it in. The senior from Australia. 71 to 45. So it certainly appears as if Duke will keep pace with both FSU and Louisville in a three team dogfight in the ACC. That one goes down by Couture. Now that is his game. That 38% is 38% for three. And his second three, he's knocked down on the evening for the third straight game. He's made two two threes and getting out of a shooting slump that bothered him earlier close to 40 threes I think he's actually at 39 on the season and which will be four freshmen for Virginia Tech once he makes that next one at 40 threes or more Wilkins slicing in gives it off it's Couture again delay in two Couture starting to get going here is 10 and these are minutes that help you moving forward. Virginia Tech has a very tough schedule upcoming. They've got Virginia at the castle. And then I believe they have to go to Louisville. Under seven to go. Carey will be at the line. The Hokies still fighting. Tyrese Rafford out to Hunter Couture, who was able to finish it off. The beauty LA was unranked right. at any point in the 60s. I mean, didn't they win? Every national championship in the 60s. Yeah, I thought so with 30 in a row there at 63 64. Sports Center will have all of this and more coming up shortly. Now, Joe Lenar says that the Aztecs will remain the number one seed tonight, even if they lose, but would be passed by Maryland tomorrow if the Terps win at Ohio State. And how about Maryland playing great basketball? My guy, Ant Cowan, getting it done for the Terps. Jalen Sticks. Up there getting it done as well. Two up two more guys on the wooden watch. Yes. Carey will take a step out. And a really fine first half. Everybody in a Duke uniform did. Aline in the paint trying to get out of there. Back over the top for Jalen Cohn. Shot clock down to nine. He'll Great drive and dish and the stuff. 
Nice find by Jalen Cohn. And Jalen Cohn, his reputation is a scorer, even more so a shooter. But you see right there the ability to make play for a teammate. Jones penetrates. And a foul with 6.08 to go. And by the way, Coach K is not the only celebrity in the family. His grandson, John David, is competing this weekend in the 9-10 age group on American Ninja Warrior Junior. His ninja nickname is The Dude. <laughs> you and, got and he's competing in Los Angeles. The family lives here in North Carolina. John David recently won his qualifier, and he'll be competing in the world championships, too. First off, love the name. <laughs> yeah. Love it. You got to be dude. pretty confident to call yourself you, I think the he is. dude. Yes. And I can appreciate that. But American Ninja Warrior, now that's some tough stuff right there. Yeah. And, and also a great watch. Well, he sounds like a real athlete. He has to be. His nickname is the dude. Dude. You've got to be everything. Nine, ten years old, yes. Another <laughs> six minutes to go. Just to have a nickname at that age is a big deal. Aline, he turns it over. Jones, little stutter step move off the window and can't get the dunk to go. Stanley went up high. Now that's the Cassius I've grown to know and love. Try to dunk everything, stop it with the layups. Tip controlled by Moore, and the Blue Devils on a march again up 75 52. Now Cassius Stanley has been the brightest star tonight for Duke. Here's her shot off the back of the iron. So the Duke Blue Devils about to improve to 23 and four on the year and that'll be swished in. And about to go to 13 and three in the ACC. Virginia Tech will fall to 15 and 12 six and ten in conference play. Tyrese Rafford continues to play great basketball 16 and 9 for him on the night. Gonzaga and BYU coming up as Jones sticks two more. 14 point game for Trey Jones. Talking to Trey before the game and doing my Washington Wizards work had them against the Memphis Grizzlies a couple weeks ago and saw his big brother Tyus who was the biggest and most proud Duke fan the night after the huge win at Carolina. Brings to mind, who has more jobs than you do? Well, Big Monday starts with a big matchup between two of the top teams in the ACC. Number 11, Louisville, is in Tallahassee to take on number 8, FSU. Knowles 14-0 at home this season. And Kansas, they had a huge one today. Great win over Baylor. Taking on Oak State at Allen Fieldhouse, both games on ESPN. Will that number be a one beside Kansas on Monday, or will Gonzaga be the number one team in the AP poll? Yes, that is the question. Delorier on the back down, and that's a foul on him. Offensive foul, number two. Most AP number one teams. This has been a wild year. Started early too with the number one teams getting knocked off. Who wants to be number one? Nobody. <laughs> Duke has been one of the teams that has had that number one ranking as well. Nothing new there. Called with a jumper. Got it. That's a three. And Virginia Tech has won the second half thus far. It was a 26 point lead for Duke going into the locker room. Right now, a 20 point game. And one of the things if you're Mike Young you're coaching for is your next game recognizing you've got to find something to build on in this game and the way they were hit early in this one you're probably going to have to throw this tape away. I believe they've got a big game coming up with Virginia this week. And Indeed they do. And after what happened to them when they went to the JPJ in Charlottesville Virginia held them to 39 points. So they've got to build something here over the next 309 that carries them into the middle of the week. Now Mike Young continuing to teach and hopefully for the very young team. 
And loving life with the popcorn. Yeah, 635 when Coach Young was eating popcorn, Cassius Stanley was knocking down threes. And it continued into this game. Whatever routine Cassius had pregame, he needs to stick with that all season long. Yep, 21 points for him. Carey with 16, Hurt with 16, Jones is 14. For the Duke Blue Devils. Moore jumping inside strong, but it rolls off the rim. And the Hokies come away with it. Duke very close to the season average of just over 82 points per game as Aline leans in for two and one. He'll be at the line. And San Diego State has gone down to defeat. They are beaten by Vegas tonight. Probably the best thing for Brian Dutcher and his team. Trying to carry that badge of going undefeated throughout an entire season because that becomes more of the story than does how well you're playing. I can remember, you know, 2015 Kentucky getting the 38 no and losing in the Final Four, the year that Duke won the national championship over Wisconsin. But everyone was more concerned about could Kentucky make it a perfect season than could they win the game that they had to play next. Nifty move here by Jordan Goldwire. Who took a hit? He'll be at the line. And Jordan Goldwire finding his way to the rim, using that strength over Jalen Cohn to be able to finish and flexing just a little bit. Ron Groover getting out of the way of the flex. Of course, the official never wants to get hit by a flex. No, sir. Junior from Norcross, Georgia, with a three point play. Seven points tonight. Well, if you missed. The first five or six minutes of this game, it was over very quickly in terms of Duke just running away with it. They were very crisp on the dunk here. Ojiako with two. But right out of the gate, Trey Jones, I thought, he's the guy that established what kind of night it was going to be for the home team by burying those threes. Yeah, knocked down two consecutive threes on the first two possessions of the game. Vernon Carey got involved, and then, of course, Cassius Stanley stepped up and knocked down back-to-back -back threes, and just like that, the Blue Devils were way out in front, and the Hokies were playing catch-up ever since. Early in the season, too, those three-pointers were following rapidly for Virginia Tech. Not so much the last couple of weeks, especially against a team like Duke, which has been exceptionally good at suffocating their opponent's three-point game. One of the best in the country at it. Now, I just saw that graphic. So the Zags are at BYU tonight. Is that correct? That's the game to follow us. Uh-oh. Well, then Kansas may be number one. Because I can see the Zags going down at BYU. Mm. Heard will draw the foul after the around the back move to get free. Yeah, Matthew Hurst been showing off his ball handling here tonight. Made a number of plays in the first half. And then we'll say a nifty behind the back move for Hurt. Are you talking about the Zags? That's coming up next. The team notes 40 game win streak. The WCC regular season. Seven players averaging 10 or more points per game. And Lenardi has them as a number one seed. I'm calling it, Obi. I'm calling upset. We've said all year long the one team that you thought could challenge the Zags in conference was BYU. BYU up to 23 nationally now, playing great basketball. And one thing you know about BYU, especially on their home court, they can shoot the three. And that is the one way if you want to knock off a top-tier team, you make more threes, you've got a chance. A little delay here. The official's trying to figure out how many fouls on a particular player if someone's fouled out with a minute 16 to go. 83-62 Duke. Well, what a day. I mean, if that happens, if your pick to click, your upset special comes through, the Zags go down, San Diego State, and, and, Baylor. and Baylor all on the same day. I can see it happening. And it's been that type of year in college basketball to where if one goes down, you would almost expect for everyone else to lose. Well, if all of that happens... So stay up and watch late night basketball out west that's coming up next here at ESPN. If that occurs, 
that's the most momentous day of the college basketball season by far. I would agree. And nothing against Mark Few and the Zags. Love them. Just feel like going on the road. And this is a team that has escaped a number of games this year, or especially early in conference play. They were winning close games and not dominating the competition. And we know that the Cougars will definitely be up for this one at BYU. Robinson with the block. Duke on the run and the slam. Well, the Duke faithful love it. When a guy who doesn't get many minutes comes off the bench and does something like that, famous father or not, Wilkins back in the paint for two. That had me reminiscing right there. I can remember being on the court and watching 5-0 come up with the block shot, run the floor, catch the lob. Justin looking like dad out there on that last possession. Now Duke with a big win here tonight. They bounce back in style. They got it rolling quickly this evening. In fact, just seconds into the game, they were already up six to nothing. Robinson will fire and knock it down from three-point land. How about that? I don't remember his dad doing many of those. <laughs> Long one by Couture is around and out, and that does it. Duke wins this one in a romp, 88 to 64, and he win for the 23rd time this season, knocking off Virginia Tech. Tonight, coming up next, Gonzaga and BYU. For Corey Alexander and our entire crew, I'm Dave O'Brien saying so long tonight from Durham, North Carolina. Certainly hope you enjoyed it. Duke in the win column once again. Now we send it to Provo. Dave Fleming and Sean Farnham.